Are you an SPS nut looking to optimize coloration of your corals? Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to another episode of CVTV. My name is Jeremy and I will be your host for today. There are many factors that contribute to the pigmentation of corals, including light, nutrients, stability, and water chemistry. Over the past few years, three microelements have been associated more with coral color than anything else we can test for. Potassium, iron, and iodine. In fact, depletion of excessive levels of potassium, iron, and iodine have shown negative effect in SPS coral coloration and even health. As always, it is imperative to test before and for the duration of dosing anything to your aquarium. We are working with living and sensitive organisms that can easily be negatively affected by overdose. Giesemann Aquaristics, well known for their beautiful lighting fixtures, had developed a new line of high accuracy test kits. Giesemann professional test kits are designed, manufactured, and tested to standards that are unparalleled to this industry. All Giesemann test kits feature calibrated droppers to ensure that every drop administered is exactly the same. You can do one, two, three, four times the test, and the results will always be the same. All test kits feature a clearly printed expiration date and lot number. All test kits include multi-language instructions, and professionally calibrated color charts. All reagent bottles are clearly labeled, making every Giesemann test kit easy to understand and use. Potassium is one of the most prevalent elements in natural seawater, with similar concentrations to calcium levels around 380 and 410 milligrams per liter. Potassium is considered an important element in the reef aquarium and is used by corals, clams, and other building invertebrates for the coral skeleton. Enhanced blue and purple coloration, SPS, are often observed when proper levels of potassium are maintained. Potassium does not normally deplete from most systems and can normally be maintained by regular water changes. It is highly suggested to test regularly, especially if dosing potassium. Low potassium levels typically lead to a reduction in coral growth and fading of SPS colors. Excessive potassium levels can lead to browning of corals, burnt tips, and algae blooms. Testing for potassium using the Giesemann test kits is rather simple. Rinse the test kit in running water and then rinse the vial several times with aquarium water. Once fully rinsed, fill it with one milliliter of aquarium water using one of the three included syringes for increased accuracy. Carefully shake the K1 reagent bottle before use and add one milliliter to the test vial using one of the two remaining syringes and swirl for 10 seconds. A white precipitation will occur. Wait 10 minutes. Carefully shake the K2 reagent bottle before use and then add five drops to the test vial and swirl. Subsequently, shake the K2B reagent bottle before use and then add five drops to the test vial and swirl. The sample should now be a yellow color. Mount the plastic tip onto the remaining one milliliter syringe Fill the syringe with one milliliter of K3 test fluid. Be sure to keep the tip of the syringe fully submerged when drawing reagent and stop when the lower edge of the black piston reaches the one milliliter mark. There will be some air present right below the piston. This is normal and will not affect the results. Slowly add the syringe reagent one drop at a time and swirl the sample after each drop. Continue adding until the sample changes from a yellow to a blue. Now, let's figure out how much reagent we used. We can achieve this by subtracting the reading where the piston stopped from the one milliliter mark. Multiply the amount of K3 used by 250, and then subtract from 500 to obtain your potassium results, or simply use the chart included in the box. In our example, we used 0.3 milliliters of K3 reagent, so our final potassium level is at 425 milligrams per liter. Rinse the test file and measuring syringe with tap water and store. Iron is a minor trace element that is often depleted from systems that utilize refugiums, aggressive protein skimming, or heavy activated carbon use. Iron is vital to the survival of many species of invertebrates, phytoplankton, macroalgae, and even symbiotic zooxanthellae that resides within the tissue of SPS and LPS corals. 
iron is reported to support red and pink colorations of corals and help prevent bleaching. Iron concentrations should be periodically tested to ensure that its level is maintained at or near 0.15 mg per liter. Overdosing iron will result in greening of corals as well as unwanted algae. Using the test kit is simple. Rinse the test vial in running water and then rinse the vial several times in aquarium water. Once fully rinsed, fill it with 10 milliliters of aquarium water using the included syringe for increased accuracy. Add one level scoop of iron powder using the mini spoon. Shake the FE2 reagent bottle before use and then add five drops to the test vial and swirl for 10 seconds. Wait 10 minutes. By looking from above, match up the color of the test sample with the included color card to determine the iron level. It is best to use non-direct lighting. Rinse the test vial and measuring syringe with tap water and store. Iodine is extremely important for most reef species, including many different types of vertebrates, gorgonians, soft corals, especially axenia, and macroalgae, which will greatly benefit from the addition of iodine. Supplementing iodine is often suggested to enhance green and blue coloration within SPS corals. The iodine concentration in a saltwater aquarium should mimic the natural values and range between 0.02 and 0.06 mg per liter. Performing the Giesemann iodine test is rather simple. Rinse the test vial in running water and then rinse the vial several times with aquarium water. Once fully rinsed, fill it with 5 milliliters of aquarium water using the included syringe for accuracy. Shake the I1 reagent bottle before use and then add 5 drops to the test vial and swirl for 10 seconds. Subsequently, shake the I2B reagent bottle before use and then add 5 drops to the test vial and swirl. Wait 20 minutes. By looking from above, match up the color of the test sample with the included color card to determine your iodine level. It is best to use non-direct lighting. Rinse the test vial and measuring syringe with tap water and store. Keeping your water parameters at optimal levels and ensuring that your corals have access to the very basic building blocks needed to grow and thrive will increase our success rate. As reef hobbyists, we have one single job, maintain water quality. That is the key to enjoying a tank full of happy and colorful corals. Well, that is our video for today. If you'd like to learn more about the Giesemann Potassium, Iodine, and Iron Test Kits, head on over to Coralby.com. If you have any other questions or issues with the product, don't hesitate to visit our support portal at corvy.com forward slash support. Our friendly support reps are eager to help you with any questions or issues you may have. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all the latest product reviews and tutorial videos. You can also follow us on Twitter at CoralView and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash CoralView Aquarium Products.